welcome to Committed to Ministering Together. I'm Nerida Taylor Bates with the Association of Adventist Women. Today, we're going to talk about what is limiting us in our Christian walk. So ladies, do you have some suggestions as to what limits you? No. <laughs> Where do we start? <laughs> oh, I know that I I feel very limited by worry. I I just I worry, worry, and it probably is a control thing. You know, I want to be in control and and Jesus isn't giving me all the answers. And so I feel like I have to worry because maybe he forgot something. <laughs> you know, uh, when my daughter accused me of worrying all the time, I said, it's my job as a mom to worry about you. <laughs> so um, how many children yes. do you have? <laughs> yes. How many times did you practice this? <laughs> But yeah, that's that's perfectly true. Our our worry about, you know, what can go wrong? What will people say? Um, do I have it right? Um, doubting ourselves. Uh, all of these things mm -hmm. are limiting us. Yeah. Plus, what we were told that a woman should do and shouldn't do. You know, you are nursing cap. Instead of yes. you ask for a, yeah, that's limiting. It is. It is. Yeah, I think not, not thinking that God can take care of things and worrying about certain things that we really shouldn't have to worry about. Yeah. And sometimes I think that I, I, I limit myself by thinking I can't do that. I'm, I'm not trained in that, particularly in this position with Association of Adventist Women. I'm a pediatrician. I'm a scientist. Uh, I <laughs> teach medical students. I feel like I can't do that. Um, and it's been very interesting journey to uh, have people say, oh, pastor. And I'm like, I'm, I'm not a pastor and then I think but but in this second uh, that's my role it may not be my job but right now they're honoring me by saying that's that's your role to me and and so I'm I'm trying to take that step and say okay I I will stop saying I can't <laughs> And not only that they are honoring you, but they are affirming yeah. the quality of your work. Oh. You know, can can you can you see the difference in what I'm saying? Yes, I because, thank you. Uh, yeah, because you know we we've been together in this journey, and you know, in the past couple of years, and we know how amazing you are and how much you did. And I would say, yes, you can, because, because you are a woman, because you are a professional, because you are educated, because you are a leader, because you are a teacher. So even though I, I don't know what you think would have been the best qualification for this or bachelor degree in this in public relations, <laughs> maybe, I don't know. But I think you are, we all agree that you are doing an amazing job. <laughs> You are the woman of the hour and you've learned whatever, whatever you had to learn, you were ready to do it. Thank it's, you. She's the woman of the 40 hours. Okay. <laughs> so one of the things that we're going to hear in our talk today is that everybody's gift is important. And I want you to listen to see the one gift that she points out that you would never think is is a uh, is our duty to to practice so that we're not limited. So our speaker today is Dr. <laughs> Shirley Johnson. Shirley is one of the most dynamic uh, preachers. We have enjoyed her so much at Cold and Anointed. If you know any women pastors who need encouragement and practical help. 
called and anointed is a series that they must catch up on. And Dr. Shirley Johnson has spoken for the devotional on both of these events. She <laughs> is the pastor for exhortation at Capitol Hill Seventh-day Adventist Church in Washington, D.C. And today she's talking about going beyond our limitations. My brothers and sisters, uh, today I'd like to speak to you on the topic, moving beyond limitations. Um, I'm going to speak from the book of Judges 4 and 5, story of uh, prophetess and Judge Deborah. Uh, Deborah is one of my favorite um, persons in the Bible, not just because she's a woman, even though that's that has a lot to do with it, um, but I saw her moving beyond limitations. During the time of Deborah, um, the children of Israel were in such a bad um, way. God had delivered them into the hand of King Jabin because of, of their sin. And the Bible said that um, at this time, they were in such a bad way that um, no one was going in or out of Israel. Nobody was coming in and nobody was going out. They were depressed. They were downtrodden. They were hurting, glory to God, because they had been under this um, King Jabin for over 20 years. And, and he had such a stronghold on them. And everybody was tired and beat down. Glory to God. And in the midst of this, God had raised up Deborah to be judge over Israel. And she was judging their disputes up under the palm tree. Glory to God. I love a woman in motion. Glory to God. Not only was she a judge over Israel, but she was also a prophetess. Glory to God. Hearing the voice of God. Listening and hearing the voice of God. And not only that, she was a worshiper, glory to God, um, uh, worshiping God in, in, even in such a, uh, a bad time, in a time where Israel was so downtrodden, she was still lifting up her voice to worship God. Amen. And I want to speak to those of you listening to me, glory to God, today. I want you to know in the midst of your limitations, you can still worship God. You can still hear from God. God has called a lot of people to do a lot of things. And oftentimes, and I can speak from experience, we put limits on God. And we also put limits on ourselves, glory to God, according to what God has called you to do. Amen. And, and Deborah... Um, was already in motion. She was already judging. She was already prophesying. She was already worshiping God. Glory to God. And, and, and when God comes for his gift in you, he wants you to already be in motion, already trying to use your gift and not belly aching over who won't allow you to do so. And not, uh, 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 crying about, the people that won't help you. Glory to God. Listen, the people is, were in such a, a, a bad state um, in Israel. Nobody wanted to go to war. Nobody wanted to do anything. And even when God told Deborah that it's time to get up and wake up and go to war, and she told it to Barak, Barak said, well, I'll go if you go. Glory to God. He didn't even want to go, baby. He was tired. Glory to God. And she said, okay, I'll go with you. But I want you to know that victory is going to be delivered in the hands of a woman. Listen, God uses women that's in motion. He uses he used JL to to uh, kill um, Sisera uh, when he ran into her tent. Glory to God. JL had already been in motion. She had been. It, using that, that peg for years, glory to God, making tents, glory to God. Sometimes the things that God have you doing for years may seem mundane, glory to God, but she had been hitting that peg for years, glory to God, not knowing that one time in her life that God is going to use her to kill the enemy, enemy because she had already been in motion years before so that when the enemy came into her camp, she had practice. 
She knew how to, to, to drive that nail straight, glory to God. So I want you to know that God wants us to move beyond our limitations. Don't let the limitations of the world, of people, of the church, of anybody in your life, don't let them hold you down when God is calling you to do something in your life for him. Glory to God. As you go, the limits will be broken. Glory to God. The chains will fall off. As you go, God said, I will show you as you go. Just like Deborah, she was already in motion when God spoke to her. She was already doing the things of God. Let God use you. Move beyond your limitations. Move beyond people. Move beyond yourself. And let God do the work. God bless you. Continue to love God. Continue to worship him and move beyond your limitation. God bless you. Be encouraged. Wow. I just... Exactly. <laughs> God wants a person already in motion, already using the gifts that they have. I just... That spoke to me to, to just start and stop waiting and saying, I'm not sure. That's, that's amazing. She was a motivator. <laughs> she, she knows is, how to say it. <laughs> She's and not the minister about, of exhortation for nothing. <laughs> right. Yeah, and that true. part about JL, wow. I had never thought about that. But, you know, she did those things. Day after day after day, like we do many things and not realizing that someday we might appreciate knowing that skill. All those diaper changes, all those dinners that we've made, all the times we've controlled our temper. That's that's when we're nailing in the tent pegs at, as, as practice. We may not even know which ones God's called us to do, but but we just do them and do them because that's our calling. That's, that's so true. You know, so the moral of the story is use your gifts because you never know when an extraordinary opportunity will come along. Yeah. And keep an, keep an open heart. Don't limit, you know, don't, don't limit what God can do in your life and in the life of others. And this tied so well with the uh, yesterday presentation, you know, when the, the speaker had a comfortable life and basically she didn't have any, any other dreams. She achieved all her purposes in life. She was happy, she was accomplished, she was financially secure. And then she said yes to a call which turned her life completely upside down, but blessed her, gave, gave her so much meaning and blessed so many other people in the process. Yes, all of those children. Yeah. yeah. And created a, basically a legacy of, you know, like a river of change in the world, in that part of the world. Yes, I, I like Dr. Shirley in that I, sometimes I feel like I do. I don't sit around and read my Bible as much as I think I should, but I do. And, and so many times a sermon is about you have to sit and, and listen and, and study and, and all those things are important. But sometimes I worship by doing. Sometimes I worship by nailing in tent pegs, even though it doesn't seem like a Christian thing. We're mm. we're doing our calling. We're we're working. Uh, we're women in motion. There was a a book written by a, a friar who. Uh, I think the title is called Practicing the Presence of Jesus. 
and he was um, assigned to kitchen duty. And he thought he was going to the monastery to get close to God and to pray and to read. But he practiced seeing God and feeling God at all times. Mm -hmm. Yeah, while he was cooking his bread, while he was feeding the people who were hungry. Yeah, while he was helping their mood because they were hypoglycemic. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's such a good reminder that, that women in motion are using their gifts. That's, that's what God has called us to do. Oh, I love that thought. Yes, yes, yeah. that's so true. And I wanted to say, you know, when she says don't limit um, yourself and don't limit what God can do, it, it has, uh, I can see two, two faces of this idea. Don't put a cap on how much you can do. And also don't discount what you are already doing. Because Jael, you know, practicing the, <laughs> the tent pad, she was, you know, practicing a huge victory for uh, the people of God. When we are raising children, mm -hmm. uh, we might not, become extraordinary in our lives but through our children they might do something extraordinary yes or somebody else along the line and just to have even uh you know healthy mentally uh balanced children that's a victory yes we don't it, have to go on to be the president if we raise a healthy child who, who is loving and caring and empathetic, that's a huge victory. Yes, yes, that is for sure. Um, yeah. that's, that's such a wonderful thought. Let's yeah. borrow our heads in prayer with that thought. Our gracious God, we are so grateful that you made all of us in your image. We are so grateful that we can reflect your character in a humble way and in an extraordinary way sometimes. We are grateful because you want to shine your light through us in the world. We are grateful because you trust us and you love us and you bless us and you use us and you help us. Continue to guide us, give us courage and strength Give us wisdom and patience. Give us power to walk in the calling that you placed upon us. And help us help others in the process. Help us build each other up and hold on to hope. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Dear Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to just do mundane things as we walk with you. Sometimes just doing the dishes, we can be at peace and praise your name. Please help us to see where you want us to be. Open our eyes that we can see where you want us to stretch ourselves and do something we haven't done. Help us to put our confidence in you. And we believe that you'll hear an answer and we thank you in Jesus name, amen. Thank you, Father, so much that you allow us to be in motion and that our motions that we are using are guided by you so that we can know where to go and that what we are doing when we're working for you uh, is a benefit. So we dedicate our lives to doing what you would uh, see for us to do. And thank you so much. Please be with those who are struggling with worries, with doubts, uh, with finding out what their call is. Please help them to see, to start doing, and that you will be with them in the effort. Thank you so much. Amen. Amen. Amen.
my women in motion have a wonderful day and we will see you all again tomorrow.